praise and bless his name. He deserves to be praised. He deserves to be worshipped. He deserves to be magnified. Lift up your voice. Let me hear you bless his name. Magnify him. So great. He deserves all the glory. He deserves all the honor. He deserves all the adoration. Father, in the name of Jesus, we bless you. You deserve all the glory. You deserve all the honor. In Jesus' mighty name. Now, throughout the week, we've been fasting and we are praying. And our theme is divine intervention. We want God to intervene in our situation. Whatever God is involved becomes easy. Hallelujah. And throughout the whole year, we want God to be involved. Lift up your voice and you're going to pray for his intervention in your life, in your education, in your marriage life, in every area of your life. May God intervene for you. Whatever is not going well, when he intervenes, it will go well. So lift up your voice and pray. Father, we ask for your divine intervention in our lives. In the name of Jesus, as a church, intervene in the church. And whatever is not going well, let it go well. As individuals, Lord, intervene in our lives. Whatever is not going well, let it go well. Right now, intervene in those who are looking for partners. Intervene in their lives. Intervene in the lives of those who are sick. Let them be healed. In the name of Jesus, intervene in our finances. Intervene in our businesses. Intervene, my God, in our needs and provide for us. In the name of Jesus, we carabas. Intervene, Lord. Let there be divine intervention. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Carabas Santaya. Lord, intervene. In our marriages. In our finances. In our health. In our business. In the church. Intervene for us in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Father, we thank you this morning as we come to hear your word. We pray that you will give us understanding in the name of Jesus to hear your word. I ask that you will speak through me to bless your people. I take authority over every foul spirit. I command them out of here in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Can we appraise that? Praise team. Give a big hand. Give a big hand. They work really hard to be here. Amen. Praise God. How has your week been? Have you had a nice week? Some of you, I can see from your faces, you are not fasting at all. <laughs> Praise God. And uh, if you are not fasting, there is another week more, so get involved. Fasting is good for you. It makes you healthy. Praise God. It opens your spiritual antenna for you to hear God and to see so many things that have branded you. To do here. So fasting is good. Although the body don't like it, but it's good. Amen. Amen. Should I name some people who are not fasting? <laughs> Amen. All right, turn your Bible with me to the book of Nehemiah. Nehemiah chapter 2, please. Nehemiah chapter number 2. And I'll read from verse 1. Nehemiah chapter 2, verse 1. And it came to pass in the month of Nisan, 
in the 12th year of King Artaxerxes, when wine was before him, that I took the wine and gave it to the king. Now I had never been sad in his presence before. Therefore the king said to me, why is your face sad since you are not sick? This is nothing but sorrow of heart. So I became dreadfully afraid and said to the king, may the king live forever. Why should my face not be sad when the city, the place of my father's tomb, lies waste and its gates are burned with fire? Then the king said to me, what do you request? So I prayed to the God of heaven. And I said to the king, if it pleases the king, and if, if your servant has found favor in your sight, I ask that you send me to Judah, to the city of my father's, to the city of my father's tomb, that I may rebuild it. Amen. Say amen. amen. Now, last week we spoke about finding a vision. Praise God. And today I want to continue, hallelujah, by a little further and talking to you how you can identify your vision. Hallelujah. Praise God. Now, we said that vision is a God-given mental picture of a preferred future. Or it is seeing into the future before you get there. Hallelujah. Or seeing with your eye of faith in a distance. Hallelujah. Before it comes to you. And it is very important for every one of us to have a vision. As we saw in scripture last week, the Bible says that without vision, the people perish. So vision is very important. When you don't have a vision, more or less, you are walking or roaming about aimlessly. And whatever comes to you, you grab it. Whatever don't come, you leave it. And that is not good. It is good to have a vision. Praise God. In this scripture, Nehemiah, who was the king's cupbearer, way in Persia. One day, you know, he had a news. Somebody came from Jerusalem. And as he was talking to them, he was informed that Jerusalem, the walls has been broken down and all the gates has been burned with fire. Now, immediately that he heard that, he became concerned. It's like every one of us, sometimes, you know, when people come from back home or you hear in the local radio station, they tell you things that are going on back home. Some of them, you are not happy with it, but you just leave it, you don't do nothing. But in the case of Nehemiah, moment he heard that Jerusalem is completely destroyed. The walls have been broken and the gates are burned with fire. Suddenly, he became concerned. And by being concerned, he started fasting and he started praying. He started fasting and praying and confessing the sins of their fathers because he realized that what their fathers did, God did not appreciate it. That is why he led them to go into captivity. So he started confessing their sins and praying. And while he was doing that, God placed a burden on his heart. And the burden was that, Nehemiah, now you've heard that the walls have been broken and the gates are burned. You are the one I am appointing to go and have a fix. Say with me, you are the one. Now, 
most of the time, <laughs> sometimes when we are in a church and we see a burden, instead of us organizing ourselves and seeing how best we can fix it, a lot of people, they just, you know, leave. And that is not good enough. It is corrective responsibility. It happens that I am the pastor, but the church is for the Lord Jesus Christ. One day, as I finish my work, and I hope <laughs> it is really far away, God will move here and another body will come in. Did you hear me? So right now, as all of us are here, it is collective responsibility. Whatever area God has given you, you make sure you operate there. Fine. There may be problems here and there, but that is why you are there. You fix it. Did you hear me? Yeah. There is no perfect church in this world, but we work by the grace of God. When there is a situation, we fix it. We fix it. We move on. And as we are fixing and we are moving on, things get better. Did you hear? So that was the situation that happened. Nehemiah, though he was in captivity, heard that something bad had not happened back home. He was concerned. And as he was praying and fasting, God placed a burden that you are the one I'm pointing to fix it. Now, as he was fasting and praying, his turn came for him to go before the king. And by the protocol of the house, you should not appear before the king with a sudden face. It is punishable by death. In other words, if you are working in the palace or in the presence of the king, whenever even you are sad, come smiling. <laughs> because in the days of old, they understood, and even it is true today, that sometimes when you find yourself in a place where everybody is muddy, before you realize it has come to you. Do you, do you know that? Because there's what we call transferable of spirits. So the king has in place that if you are sad, don't come to my presence. But here you are, this guy working in the palace. He's been fasting. And so when you see him, you know that he is. <laughs> That's why I said those who are not fasting today, I'll, I'll point you out. <laughs> Praise God. So the king got to know and then, as he was serving, the king called him. And he said, why are you sad? And if you look at the scripture, the Bible says he was dreadfully afraid. Because why? Because he knew that he's going to die. Because it shouldn't happen. Did you hear? Why are you sad? So he began to pray. Oh, God, help me. Lord, help me. But prior to that, he had been fasting and praying. So the Bible says that favor came to him. And then he got the boldness to speak to the king. Oh, king, leave long. In other words, he prays him first. King, leave long. But why should I not be sad? When the place where they buried my father and my mothers lied ruined. In other words, Jerusalem is destroyed. That is why I am sad. And then the king, looking at him, you know, thinking, what should I do? Should I take you to the gallows or make you leave? And then the king asked, what do you want me to do? Did you hear? What do you want me to do? And then the king, uh, then he said, if, you see, all this God is behind and then he said, King, if I have found favor in your sight, I ask that you ask me to go to Jerusalem so that I can have it fixed. 
And when he said that, the king was still looking at him. He didn't know where that thing was going to turn. The next question that came was that, how long would you be if I allow you to go? If I were him, I would be happy inside. I know it's things are working. You know? And then he gave the time frame. The king, if you allow me to go, I will be so so and so. And then the king agreed. And then he said, King, if you have allowed me to go, then give me authority note. Write me letters so that I can have a safe passage. I pray that this year you have safe passage in the name of Jesus. And give me authority note for safe passage. And also when I go, the governors of the land, they will know that I came from you. And all these, even though they are difficult situations, but God then, by the reason of favor, allowed the king to give authorization. Did you hear? Hallelujah. And then Nehemiah, after preparation, got on the road, got to Jerusalem. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise God. And when he got to Jerusalem, he didn't just start straight away. He went on the background. And then in the night, he will walk around doing a survey. Praise God. Doing a survey, what need to be done? What need to be done? And after seeing everything, he called the elders and then explained his mission to them. Hallelujah. Praise God. In other words, he built goals about how to accomplish the vision. Praise Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. And then we know subsequently that enemies, when they started, enemies rose up. In the person of Sambalat and Tobiah and a man called Geshem, they rose up against him. Praise God. Vision, sometimes the enemy will rise up. But despite everything, because God was with them, they were able to accomplish and they were able to rebuild the walls. That is why you and I need to find a vision. It is very important. Visions are very important. Hallelujah. And this morning, I want to know from you, what vision has God placed in your heart to fix this year or to accomplish this year? You cannot just say, oh, uh, uh, 2022 will be a nice, beautiful year. Yeah, okay, it's good to say that. But it requires more than that. We've been saying that for 30 years, 40 years. That's for this year will be different. Somebody said to me, you know, that doing the same thing and expecting different results is insanity. If we want something to change, then we have to do something different. So what are you doing different this year in order to gain the results? As a church, we have to think about doing something different. As individuals, you have to think about doing something different. Are you with me? Hallelujah. Praise God. So, God will place, number one way of finding your vision is that God will place a burden upon your heart. Did you hear? A burden will come upon your heart. You begin to pray about the burden. You begin to pray. Forget about the money. The money aspect, God will provide. The idea is to have the vision first. And as you keep on praying, you see, if you look at Nehemiah's model, he didn't have the money, the equipment to, to do the vision. But when the king approved it, the king then wrote letters whereby, you know, uh, the governors will supply what he needs. So have a godly vision first. 
But oftentimes, a lot of us, you know, sometimes are building things, you know, by ourselves. If you like, have a vision this year. The Lord, I want to sponsor the church to be on television for soul winning. And take a step. See how God will provide you with money to do what you have. But none of us have that vision. Sometimes even we have to struggle to get what is necessary from you. Did you hear? We call for tight, and sometimes only two people will come. Meanwhile, the people who don't come, they have two houses, three houses. Who are you kidding? Tell your neighbor, have a vision this year to support the work of God. See, you are afraid. You can't even say it louder. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> because you don't believe in it. Praise God. Moment Nehemiah heard that something was not going well, he offered himself and God flowed through him and had it done. If you want to do something substantial, it begins with a vision. Nelson Mandela, when he saw what was going wrong in South Africa and a burden came on him, he spent a long time in prison. Yet eventually, the vision came to fulfillment. Did you hear? Uh, like what, what I said last week, Martin Luther King in America. Likewise that, he died. Yet today, the vision has come to fulfillment. Did you hear? So what has God placed in your heart? This morning, as I was reading about the name Florence Nightingale came, and she was an ordinary nurse. But during the war, when she saw people dying, she volunteered herself to go to the battlefield, taking risks to save others. And that is why her name has become a household name. When you mention Florence Nightingale, even in my village, somebody will explain. <laughs> Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise God. So it is important that you have a vision. And when you have a vision, you break it into goals. And that is what Nehemiah did. He broke it down to see how best that it can be accomplished. So vision will come. Once you have it, you break it down. And as you break it down, praise God, you begin to put into place how it can be accomplished. The Bible says in the book of Habakkuk, in the book of Habakkuk chapter 2, in verse number 2, it says that, Then the Lord answered me and said, Write the vision and make it plain on tablets that he may run who reads it. For the vision is yet for an appointed time. But at the end, it will speak. And it will not lie. Though it tarry, wait for it. Because it will surely come. Hallelujah. It would not tarry. And so when you have the vision, it is important that you write it down. Hallelujah. And you need to write it down because if you don't, sometimes it may vanish. The care of the world and the troubles of the world may cause it to evaporate. So write it down. Hallelujah. It is recently a survey was done in U.S. 
and they were checking people who were able to achieve their New Year resolutions. Hallelujah. And they found out that 46% of those that they surveyed, those who wrote it down, 46% were able to achieve it. Hallelujah. Praise God. 4% of those who didn't have goals managed to achieve it. To do here. So look at how it is 46 and 4. So it is very good that you write it down. And when you write it down, the Bible says that make it plain. In other words, don't write it and put it somewhere that you can find. Put it somewhere that always you can see. And what you see can always ignite fire in you. Did you hear? So you write it down, maybe on your best side. Maybe on your fridge. Maybe in your living room somewhere. So that you can see. Praise God. Hallelujah. And when you write it down, uh, you make sure that you define them into achievable goals. Now let's say um, God has put in your heart that he needs you to finance uh, maybe a children's home. And it's a big project. So you write it down, you break it down, and maybe you write maybe year one, I will go and I will search for land. Year two, maybe I'll put blocks and materials together. Year three, maybe major work. I'm just saying how you break it down into achievable goals. Uh, maybe, you know, I will start the major work. And by year four, year five, maybe it's completed. And then you are ready to start. Did you hear? So you write it down. And you break it down into achievable goals. And then the scripture, as we read it, it says that run with it. Run with it means do not procrastinate. There are some people, they always say, oh, next year I will do this. And then before they realize, December is down. And then they go, next year I will do it again. No, stop procrastination. And that happens when you run with it. Praise God. You run with it. You run with it. You run with it. Let passion of the vision keep you moving. So when you write it down into in the place where you always see it, it, it will generate passion in you that this I want to do. This I want to do. This I want to do. And before you realize, you are doing it. There is a story about... Um, a king who announced when her, uh, his daughter got to age to be married. So the king announced it in the, in the town that they, they live, that I want my daughter to be married. And then he set a difficult tax. Praise God. He called all the men in the, in the, in the city into one area, and there is a pond uh, in front of them, full of you know uh, alligators. And then he said, "Whoever can swim across onto the other side first will marry my daughter." <laughs> How many, how many of you will quit before you, <laughs> before you start? So all the men were lining up, and they, they, they were discussing this. How can, how can this thing be? How can this thing be? And there was a guy who was there, macho man, you know, just looking at the, the, the benefit of marrying the king's daughter. Praise God. Praise God. <laughs> How he will be exempted from taxes. How some silver and gold will be given. 
how he will get a free palace to live in. Do you hear? He was focusing on those things. And before he realized he's on the other side, he has crossed the you know, alligators and the crocodiles and he has swum towards the, and he has come out. And guess what? When he came out, then he started asking, who pushed me in? <laughs> Nobody pushed him in. But the passion, did you hear, of getting the thing, he did it without knowing. And sometimes, that is what it is. When you have vision and you have passion for it, you do it without excuses or looking for a way out. Did you hear? And that is why it is necessary to make sure that you run with it. Praise God. Every vision, if you don't run with it and you leave it and you leave it, you leave it before you realize it has died out. Run with it. When Nehemiah had the passion, when the, 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 the godly vision came into his heart and he went to the king, not knowing that the king would identify, God gave him a favor and straight away, within a few months, he was in Jerusalem doing what has been given. Are you here? So, as you and I are praying, I believe that God will place something in your heart to get done. Make sure that you find ways which is called goals. Break it down and get it done. Start doing it. Not every year, oh, we will do this. We will do this. And before you realize, the year has ended. Are you here? Yeah. Praise God. And then the Bible says that appointed time, there is an appointed time for the vision. Every vision has an appointed time. Verse 3 says, for the vision is yet for an appointed time. There is an appointed time. The Bible says in Ecclesiastes 3.1 that to everything there is a season. To everything. That means you are included. To everything. Are you part of everything? The answer is yes. If you are part of everything, then there is a season for you to manifest. There is a season for you to become. There is a season for you to build. There is a season for you to be married. To everything, there is a season. Sometimes as human, we think we are being left out. No, no, no. You, 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 well, God knows you. It is God who created you. So God has appointed a season for you. So your vision, the vision that God has placed for you, there is a season for it to manifest. Hallelujah. And make sure that you don't miss that season. So the Bible says that to everything there is a season and wait for it. Praise God. Wait for the season. And then uh, the fifth point that I want to stress is that he says, though it may tarry, yet it will come to pass. Though it may tarry, praise God, delays may come, Obstacles may be there, but you know that the obstacles and the delays are all part of the process to get something done. Hallelujah. And at the right time, as you keep on at it, as you keep on at it, as you keep on at it, eventually you will be able to accomplish what God says accomplish. When God spoke to Joseph about him going to be a, a, a a, a leader, it didn't take one day, not even two years. It took several years. He went to prison for it. And I believe that he probably, he himself may have forgotten about what God said. But eventually it came to pass. Did you hear me? So the vision may be uh, for an appointed time, yet wait for it, and it will come to pass. Now, in the case of Nehemiah, God placed the vision as a burden upon his heart. In some people, they find the vision based on 
what is or what they can do freely. There are some people, sometimes there are a lot of things they can do with their eyes closed. They don't struggle. Did you hear me? They don't struggle doing it. And if you are that person, that is also uh, an indication of what God has given to you already. Begin to work on it. Hallelujah. If you begin to work on it before you realize it has materialized and it is there for the taking. Are you here? Praise God. I don't know how to play football, but some people, they can play when they are sleeping. <laughs> that means work on it and it won't be long. I love football, but I, I'm, I'm not good at it. Or let me say singing. I love singing, but my voice, hey, ya ta ta. But some of you, 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 are, you are on the bed, as the deer pan for water, and, <laughs> and you are singing. Keep working on it. Is that so? And before you realize your CDs and uh, all these are in the making, praise God. Well, that's how I'll be struggling. <laughs> praise Jesus. Hallelujah. That is how it works. Hallelujah. And there are some others too. You find something, your vision, you find it because it gives you satisfaction. Did you hear? There are something that naturally it gives you satisfaction. You can go and work for money. They will give you a lot of money. But when you come, you see that your heart is hollow. You are not happy. But when you do that thing and you finish and you go, you see you are satisfied. Did you hear? That means it is an area that God wants you to work on. You feel satisfaction. It brings joy to you. Especially when you help people. Especially some people, uh, what, what, what they, 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 they want to work on is to work with children. When they help children, and they see them growing, they get satisfaction. That is your area. Praise God. Did you hear me? Hallelujah. And it is really necessary to find your vision and work on it. Let me give you a last scripture. Come with me to the book of Hebrew. Hebrew chapter 12, verse 2. We want to look at the Lord Jesus Christ. Hebrew chapter 12, verse 2. Hallelujah. We know that the Lord Jesus, he came to save us. Here the Bible says that looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. In other words, Jesus must be our a perfect example in everything that we do, looking unto him. So look at him. Hallelujah. When you look at Jesus, you will find your vision. Looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him, who for the joy that was set before him, Endure the cross, despising the shame, hallelujah, and has sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. For consider him who endures such hostility from sinners against himself, lest you become weary and discouraged in your soul. Now, as we are talking about vision, Whatever your vision is, you know, you, there will be times that there will be difficulties. There will be times that, you know, there will be delays. And sometimes it may discourage you. But as the Bible said, looking unto Jesus, Jesus was able to accomplish what he accomplished for the fact that he realized that one day I will be enthroned. One day I will be at the right hand of God. One day I will be seated. 
and that thing gave him joy. So when you have your vision and you are doing it, there are times that, you know, you will be saddened. There are times that you will not be happy about situations. But let the joy of finishing and let the joy of helping a lot of people, let the joy of making other people happy continue to motivate you and help you to help you to finish. Did you hear? For example, maybe you have been called that support the church, give money to the church, and you keep on giving. I know nobody does that. So that's why I'm using this as an example. And you keep on doing it, and you keep on doing it, you keep on doing it. There are times that you realize that maybe I could have used this money for this. But keep on doing it. Because souls will be saved. Souls will be saved. People will be helped. And as people are helped, it will come back into your account. Do you know one of my prayers that I pray for you? I pray that some of you will be a billionaire. If only you will remember the church when you are. And then you come and say, Pastor, this is a check of a million. Wow. But that can pay all our debt for 10 years. <laughs> Praise God. Hallelujah. And that can support a lot of people that are in need. But currently, we can't do it because the money is not there. Have it in your heart that God should help you and prosper your business so that you'll be able to do something meaningful in the kingdom. Let's rise, please. <laughs> Say with me, Father God, as we have begun the year, in the name of Jesus, I ask that as you place a vision in the heart of Nehemiah, you will touch my life and you will place a vision in my heart for me to accomplish. Help me, Lord, so that the vision that comes to me will be a godly vision and not a worldly vision in the name of Jesus. Lift up your voice and begin to pray. Pray that God will touch you and God will give you a godly vision in the name of Jesus. A godly vision for you to accomplish, for you to fulfill in the name of Jesus. Karabos Santaya. Li Karabas Santoto. Li Karabos Santaya. Makaturiya Baba. Yen Terebosi Karabara. Li Karabas Santoria. Yen Tarababa. Ye Tarababa. May God help you. May God place in your heart a godly vision so that many people will benefit. Continue to pray. The Bible says, run with it. Run with the vision. May you not procrastinate. May you run with the vision in the name of Jesus. May you run with the vision as God put in your heart. May you not be discouraged by obstacles. May you not be discouraged by obstacles and by difficulties and by pain in the name of Jesus. May the vision be accomplished. Now, I'm going to pray for you. But for now, I want you to take your eyes off yourself and focus on God. Focus on doing something to help God's business. And it is through that that your own need will be met. The Bible says, seek ye the kingdom of God first. And all these things will be added. When Nehemiah sought the interest of God's business, I believe his own need were met. And that is the way it goes. If you look at the church, there are so many things you can do. But Susan so is thinking, Susan so should do it. Susan so is thinking, Susan so is doing it. Oh, this church, they cannot do this, so I'm going here. No, it is the whole body. So do, 
Be where God wants you to be so that you can help it to grow. I'm going to pray for you. Father, I pray for everyone here. Touch our lives. Remove every scale that the enemy has blinded us with. And help us to see what you, God, you want us to do. In the name of Jesus. Place vision in our hearts. Let it be. Let us be able to break it down into goals and plan towards it to fulfill it. In the name of Jesus, I pray for everyone. Spirit of God, touch us. Touch those online. Place godly visions in our hearts. In the name of Jesus. May God put passion in you. May God put fire in you to fulfill the vision in Jesus' mighty name. And everyone say...